Hey guys, this is the Auto Enthusiast, and today we're going to talk about how a turbocharger works and the components needed for a turbocharger system to work. As you can see in the turbocharger system, there are four main parts or components. There's the uh, actual turbocharger, the wastegate, the intercooler, and the blowoff valve. Also labeled as the engine and the exhaust piping and the actual exhaust. We have the engine, and for all intents and purposes, we can think of this as a singular cylinder, uh, the chamber. And this finishes the actual engine cycle. There's an expulsion of exhaust gases, which are right here. And those exhaust gases are hot. So the exhaust gases travel down this piping and into the turbocharger. So the turbocharger is, a, is basically a housing for two turbines that are connected via a shaft. When the hot exhaust gases enter the turbocharger, it spins this first turbine. When the exhaust gases power the first turbine, it causes it to spin. And because that first turbine is connected to the other turbine via the, a shaft, the other turbine begins to spin, and that sucks in this outside ambient air, which is cooler than the actual exhaust gases. This air, forced in by suction because of the revolution of the turbine, is pressurized, and this pressurized air is called boost. With this increase of pressure, or boost, there is uh, an increase in heat. So this air sucked in is actually pretty hot. It's not as hot as the exhaust gases, but it's still hotter than the ideal temperature of air you want going back into the engine. Before we look further into what happens with this air that's being sucked in, we're going to take a look at the wastegate and the exhaust system. So when the gases are coming from the engine, it causes a buildup of pressure around that turbine. And what the wastegate does is it regulates that pressure. Let's say we want 10 PSI in our turbocharger and a whole turbocharger system. You're able to actually limit this turbocharger system to 10 PSI with the wastegate and the blowoff valve. But we'll talk about the blowoff valve later. So the way the wastegate works is the turbocharger is accumulating this pressure because it's sucking in this outside air. And it gets to 10 PSI with that outside air. And that's basically what you want. You want that boost coming in to be 10 PSI because that's what, we've, what we have set or what's safe for our engine. What the wastegate does is it's going to take this, these exhaust gases that are coming in and also causing pressure, and it's going vent, to ventilate them out so that it doesn't add to the cooler air getting sucked in. Basically, we don't want those hot air gas, gases to cause pressure. We just want the cooler air coming in from outside. So the wastegate is going to open up, releasing all these exhaust gases down into the exhaust piping and out the exhaust. Overall, the wastegate's purpose is to inhibit any additional boost that the exhaust gases are creating. So moving on, this, the air coming out from the outside is still hot, and because the turbine is spinning, it's getting pushed down the secondary shaft of piping towards the intercooler. So this, this air going towards the intercooler is both hot and cooler than the actual exhaust gases, but we want to cool it down further so that we can have colder air going into our next engine cycle. So this is the intercooler. Uh, most, with most cars, you'll find the intercooler mounted in the front, uh, right behind the front bumper. And an intercooler is just a lot of coils. There's a whole bunch of coils in this section over here. What happens is the hot pressurized air passes through the coils where it is cooled and then moves on to the further piping on the cold side of the turbo system. Heat from the pressurized air is dispersed among the coils as it travels through the intercooler. So now this cooler pressurized air travels through the intake manifold, which is up here on the cold side of the turbo system. Then it passes over where the blow-off valve is and then re-enters the engine chamber to repeat the next engine cycle. Basically what a blow-off valve does is it relieves pressure when there's too much build pressure buildup on the cold side. So when you compress the gas, there's, there's a throttle valve right here when you enter the engine and there's a plate. When you compress the gas, this plate opens and the valve opens. This cold air from the turbocharger is entering the engine, increasing boost, and making larger explosions which fire the pistons. When you let off the gas, this valve closes and a plate seals the engine off from the, that actual cold air. So then you have this cold air building up against that plate because it can't get in. Once that cold air reaches our system PSI limit, which is 10 PSI, the blow-off valve kicks in. So the way a blow-off valve works is there's a little spring in it that you can set to 10 PSI. And when you stop compressing the gas and that plate closes and the pressure begins to build above 10 PSI, 
the spring lets pushes up and some of that pressurized air can start escaping so we're not actually going over the 10 psi and that often makes a hissing noise so what the blow off valve bov does is it alleviates this extra pressure so it doesn't go above our system safety or limit and it, it depressurizes until the next compression of gas where more of this cold air is allowed to flow into the engine so in a quick synapse of how a turbocharger system works, there are four, four main components. There's the actual turbocharger, the waste gate on the turbocharger, the intercooler, and the blow-off valve. The engine creates this, these hot exhaust gases. They run through the turbocharger, begin the turbine spinning. Air is, cold air is sucked in. The exhaust gases are routed out the exhaust, and that's allowed by the waste gate when it hits uh, maximum pressure. Um, pressure. The cold pressurized air enters the turbocharger creating boost runs down through the intercooler becoming cooled so it gets to the cold side so it's cooler going into the engine it runs past the blow-off valve and into the engine and the blow-off valve alleviates any excess pressure it allows pressurized air to escape when we hit the full system pressure when there is no acceleration when the throttle body plate is closed Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you watched some of my other videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Feel free to like the video, subscribe, and always have a good day.